your gun, cowboy. What'll be? Beer? even know what's inside. Get that snake out of here. Ah, he ain't gonna hurt nobody in the jar. I only brought him in here for a wording proposition. I don't care. Get this thing out of here. <laughs> you see, I've got a dollar that says there ain't a man here who can put his hand up against the glass when the snake strikes. Uh, that sounds like an easy way to make a dollar. Yeah, ain't it? Careful now. <laughs> got weak nerves. It takes one chance just to get used to it. Let me try again. No, 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 no Sam, no, Sam, it's my turn. <laughs> Look, I'm putting down five dollars for five more chances. We got a game here! I think I'm getting the hang of it. It's only a matter of concentration. Concentration. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I've got four more chances. Hey, wait a minute. Oh. Hey, hi, Brandy. Take him for the count, kid. You fought meaner snakes than that. <laughs> That away, Brandy. You did it. Pick up the money. No, we'll let the Criff keep the money. He moved. Who said? You moved. Everybody saw you. Maybe you could do it better, huh? For how much? Oh, I am sorry, Mr. Rockefeller. I didn't know you was in town. Is Ten bucks rich enough for you? Fifty. Yeah, let's go. I'm betting all I got right here on the cowboy. to be in that getup, some kind of Jesse James or something? Something. Well, you are one hell of a snake kisser, I'll say that for you. Hey, where'd you learn how to do that? No. No, wait a minute, don't tell me. I've seen that a couple of times before. Yeah, I got a snake maybe you'd like to kiss? Hey, he's a contender, cowboy. You better not stick around. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Brandy, you're a pro. That means you never fight for free. Billy, the crutch. The crutch. This thing's got no fangs. We've been caught. Look at that. 
we turn better than a hundred dollars back there. Come here, you. Took what? That's fifty bucks. Hey, Billy, looky there. Get in the man in the tall hat. Don't you recognize him? Are you kidding? In a machine like that. I heard tell that he's one of your rich millionaires now. Oh, You've seen him in every town from here to Omaha, except each time it wasn't him at all. I gotta find Joe Knox. You got any idea where he might be? Oh, hell do I know where he is. You know that he ain't but half a white man. <laughs> from the very jailhouse doors, did I not? Hmm? Perhaps I should introduce myself. My name is not down soldiers with a stick. In other words, Joseph Prendergast Knox Esquire, off the reservation and out of Harvard University, class of 84. Now, the way I see it, I did save you, ladies, didn't I? But I'm not asking you to thank me. Well, these ways not all at once. Now, it has been a very long time since I last sculpted a white lady. And I'm not even sure that I recall how to do it, but I do know one thing, ladies. That it is messy. Well, this one was Miss Gladys Ackerman, my fourth grade teacher at missionary school. I loved her a little bit. Well, this one, this one was a lady who stomped on my toe in an elevator in Cincinnati. Huh? Well, you ladies get my meaning, don't you? Now, why don't you just sit back quietly, ladies, and enjoy the ride? Ah! Ah! 
Gentlemen, and most welcome, ladies. We're staging this fight at Serenity because Serenity is a boom town. A lot of money, a lot of votes. We need them both. <laughs> May I make the following suggestion? When anybody asks me why I back William Howard Taft for the presidency of the United States, I don't give them political theory or economic fall or all. I simply say, I only back Taft because I only back winners. <laughs> A toast, William Howard Taft, next president of the United States. And another toast, gentlemen, to another winner, the next governor of the state, Jack Colby. Thank you. 
Come on, have a great Christmas, Paul. Oh, Mr. Colby. Yes, my dear. I do think that you are the most handsome man in this room. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't say that, but I appreciate your honesty and candor. <laughs> And you must also be the most eligible man. Eligible for what? <laughs> Madam, I'll have you know I'm very happily married. But so am I. Well, in that case... <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Holy... Two friends of mine. I haven't seen them in 15 long years. Would you excuse me just for a moment, my dear? Of course. Sam. And Joe Knox must be six, seven years anyway. Fifteen. Fifteen? Has it been that long? That long. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, let me have your attention just for a moment. It gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce to you a man you've all read about in the history books. A genuine hero of the Western frontier, one of the men who made this country what it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the famous scout and Indian fighter, Mr. Sam Longwood. If this ain't a social call, Jack, either you pay us the money you owe us now, or I'm gonna tell these good folks how you got started in the millionaire business. It sounds like a threat to you. Wouldn't you threaten me, would you, Sam? Folks, me and Jack Kobe here and Joe Knox go back a long way together. Way before he got his first railroad train, or got into politics. Yes, folks, Jack Kobe here was respectable once. You see, him and me and Joe Knox had this little gold claim up on the west rim of Death Valley, and we set aside a tidy sum. And then one morning, Joe Knox and me got up and found, much to our surprise... <coughs> Hello, Jesse James. Why in the world do you suppose Sam would want to go to making up stories about an old friend? Maybe he didn't trust you to give us back our money, Jack. Can you imagine that? You trust me, though, don't you? Yes, I do. Now. <laughs> it's funny. You don't know. I wish I'd have stayed with you boys many's the time. No, you don't. Not unless you're completely stupid. Thank you, Joe Knox. Nice of you to put it just that away. Hey, enough of these compliments. You know, we spent seven months mucking that gold, and you took off with all of it. Yes, I did. I certainly did. Would you like to know why? I don't care one cow plot why. Because that money meant absolutely nothing to you. Except another six-week drunk in a San Francisco whorehouse, and oh. then right back to more of the same. But you, you had God's own vision burnt in a rock, huh? Yes. It's called an empire. Steel rails all the way across this country. Make the Atlantic states to the Pacific, give jobs to the jobless and homes to the homeless. Make this country fine and wonderful the way it can be and should be. How's that sound? And for that mess of nothing, you crooked your pal. How'd you boys like to see the fight Saturday night? No, I'll go you one better. I'm on my way out to Vishniak's training camp. You ever ride in an automobile? The money, Jack. I would have got your damn money to you if I could have found you. I tried years ago. You're lying. How do you know? Your lips are moving. You asked Nancy Sue if I'm lying. Her train is due from Chicago tomorrow night. You mention her name one more time, and I'll slit your throat. What, and leave her a widow? Uh, you were always hard cases, both of you. I haven't got any better. Sam, look at me. I used to be able to have some fun with my life. Now I'm tied to a desk 25 hours a day. Yeah, we have a railroad. We also have thousands of little investors driving me crazy worrying about their stake. Yeah, that's good enough for you to say. But we could have been rich. Could have been somebody instead of dust eaters and cow kickers. We could have bought some respectability with that money. All right. All right. How do you want it? Two checks for two thousand each, or one for four? Um, uh, Jack. Uh, you see, the way that Sam and I had it figured, we figured uh, you owed us hundred thousand dollars. Oh, we'll uh, settle for less. Yeah, we'll settle. Say sixty thousand. Yeah, sixty thousand. Only 60,000. I'll see you in hell first. Yeah, well, that could be arranged, too. I'm sorry, boys. That's a little bit high. When you're ready to settle for the 4,000... You better cut him once, Joe Knox. 
Just to show them we ain't dirt farming. That won't be necessary. Now, if you boys will excuse me, I'll get back to my invited guests. Oh, so you can stop payment on this check, huh? One thing we haven't gotten 15 years is dumber. No, you couldn't have. Don't worry, friend. We're going to stick together like blood brothers until after the bank's open tomorrow morning. And uh, when you open this door, have your friend uh, move on down the hall. Two dollars could buy us a pine box, ma'am. You fellas heading for the fight over in Serenity? That's right, ma'am. Mike. My girl here says she saw you last night with an engine. Half-breed by the name of Joe Knox. Kidnapped one of my friends. Kidnapped? One of my young ladies. Skinny little thing. Brown hair, about 17. You sure you fellas ain't seen them? Uh, no, ma'am, I certainly haven't. Well, I heard they was heading for the fight. So if you see him, look me up in Serenity. My name's Mike. Mike? Anyone bringing in that Knox fellow and the young girl, there's 50 bucks in it for them. Or a uh, dozen free visits to my place. <laughs> <laughs> and a free visit. Ma'am, we got him. He's oh, right here. Sit down. Well, he's sit down. <laughs> she mean you stole one of her girls. Well, wouldn't you know we'd get the run of the litter. but I'm, I'm still trying to find the courage to finish this. <laughs> I say she gets raped. Raped? What's that, an old Indian tradition? It's an old army tradition. I was conceived at Wolf Poor Massacre, remember? Well, the army teaches its men to love the enemy. Yes, in groups. Hey! My father was a sergeant, two corporals, a bugler and a company cook. Well, that makes you about five, six white men after all. <laughs> I think the army did you a favor. 
And I have been trying to repay that favor ever since I lent to you, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, for Christ's sake, will you put those moldy scalps away? I happen to know that you bought them off a drummer in New Haven, Connecticut, for 50 cents apiece. That is what he says. I shall now teach him how I really won them. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. Please, I can't have you killing yourself defending my honor. I, I, I just couldn't live with that. Now, I don't like the idea of getting raped either, but... You've got I... about as much chance of getting raped around here as Joe Knox. You, you're not going to rape me? No, ma'am. Well, why not? I mean, ain't I good enough? Then who? Uh, nobody's business is who. Jack Colby's wife is who. You're gonna kidnap and rape her. Wait a minute. If it's Jack Colby you're both so mad at, what do you want to mess around with his wife for? Because she dumped Sam Longwood as wife. They was engaged to be married. But Nancy Sue dropped him like a burnt match when a certain Jack Colby puffed out his feathers. Why, you old jackass, why don't you give your mouth the rest of the day off? This here is Nancy Sue. What a beautiful lady. Who told you to show her that? The person in this picture is much too fine and pure to be held in the hands of a common prostitute. Begging your pardon, ma'am. Now put it away. What happened to your pride, Green Scout? To your sense of tradition? If we do not give Kobe back a wife that is soiled, then the $60,000 will not be worth spending. But if you do not do your duty as a man, then I will have to do it for you. You try it, you won't have what left to do it with. Talk like that could get a man's liver dropped into the dust. Or his throat cut. That you will never do, white man. I've killed more Indians in my time than I have buffaloes. Yes, I can't, sugar. Well, them two peacocks is kicking each other's heads in. Let's you and me slip up to the bushes and do a little fancy humping. Dirty old goat! I'm gonna teach you once and for all to keep your filthy hands help, off of me! Help me! Help! She's gonna kill me! Hey, what's wrong with you? Dirty old man! Sure is a strange guy. Huh. Especially when he's kicked in the mm hmms. Me, you just get away from me. I really think you got the wrong idea, miss. About me, anyway. I never had to do with horns, except when I could help. Uh, nothing personal intended. Sure. Promised you, dear old mother. I can do without that smart talk from you. Nobody invited you along on this trip, remember? I, I, wa I was kidnapped by, by that drunken half breed. From the jailhouse, yes. But to here, I didn't know such thing. You're a, you're a bunch of kidnappers, that's what you are. Well, if we were, why would we kidnap you? Skinny little thing like you wouldn't bring better than a penny a pound from any cat house from here to New Orleans. Now, the minute we get to Serenity, this piece of goods goes back to its rightful owner. That's right. Right. Oh, no, you don't. You stole me and you're stuck with me. But I, I just may stay until we get back into town, and then if you'd be kind enough to lend me the fare for a railroad ticket... Oh, don't tell me. So you can get back home and visit your dear old mom and dad on a poor little run-down farm out of Green Branch, Ohio? North... North Platte, Nebraska. North Platte, Nebraska. Why are you so tough on her, Sam? Oh, I'm not being tough on her. It's just that I heard that same story from a thousand bang tails in my day. Oh! Well, I thought you never had to do with whores. I said when I could help it. A lot of times I couldn't help it.
Pay no attention to that sanctimonious old hypocrite. Tell me, what do they call you, little one? We'll tell them. We can't go on calling you just Thursday, can we? We have a job to do. We cannot take you with us. But you don't understand. Mike, she doesn't even hardly let me go with the customer. Well, what's she doing? Saving you for herself? Yes. <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing I ever heard. Taint and graft. We'd like you for our president, Mr. William Howard Taft. The lion and the elephant, the monkey and giraffe. All the animals are voting for William Howard Taft. William Howard Taft sucks rotten eggs. <laughs> we hate you, William Jennings. Your head is up your ass. We'd like to piss on Brian and vote for Howard Taft. <laughs> Very nice words to sing about the great commoner. What did you manage to find them on an outhouse wall? What if I made them up? If the Indian gets the vote, then you can bet mine won't go to that tub of bear grease. Besides, Jacoby is supporting Taft. How can you vote for somebody with supporters like that, huh? Yeah, I know. That's the trouble. But you see, I've always voted Republican. It is said that everybody has their faults. But if you hate Kobe like you should, then you should vote for William. Jenning, Brian. I'd vote for him if I could. Well, nobody asked you. And I'll tell you why. Because he's going to give women the vote. Might as well give them the right to pee standing up. They wouldn't know what to do with it. I don't suppose you use your moldy old equipment for much anything else anyway. Is that so? Well, after we turn you over to that madam of yours, she promised us free guest privileges at her place of business. And then you'll see. Sam's not turning me in. Oh, yes, he is, little one. For the $50 we get for you, we'll be able to buy two Colt six-shot repeaters. Sam?
horse. Oh, he's halfway to Wyoming by now. We'd better get moving. Serenity's about to be a walk and a half from here. No, just a mile and a half through that canyon. Billy, you look around and see if you can find any more of our stuff and set up camp down there. And Joe Knox, you go unload this mess of trouble. No, I'm not going anywhere with him. He's got the clap. Clap? What kind of a way is that for a young lady to talk? Well, it's true. Isn't it, Billy? You heard him tell him. He said he's got it, so I guess he's got it. You whispered, Windbag, you sure can't keep a secret, huh? Oh, secret hell. You said yourself you was gonna spread it all the way across the nation, clean to the White House. It is but a temporary condition, Sam. I will get rid of it. Like you did the first time. You're damn right you'll get rid of it. First thing we get to serenity. You know that we've all been living out of the same duffel, drinking out of the same cup. Ooh. Can't get it that way. Unless, of course, she was doing something else. You know, you could rot your brain what you got. You could go blind. It could fall off. Now, you get that taken care of. And I don't mean by no moldy medicine man. I mean by a white American doctor. That's right. And what'll he do? He'll take this silver wire about this long, and he'll heat it on his little stove until it's real hot. And then he'll, uh... Joe Knox, no go to doctor. I thought Indians could take any amount of pain without flinching. Not this Indian. Oh, don't listen to the old man. All the doctor's gonna do is to uh, uh, give you a little pill. That'll fix you. You sure? Of course I'm sure. We're not living in the dark ages anymore. Modern medicine has taken great strides. Great strides. Come on, miss. I'm not loaded. Let's go, you. me. Let's go. Let's. Let, no, let's go. Joe Knox. prices. Cash or gold accepted. No wonder Jack Colby wants to hold a fight here, huh? Sam Long would never spank the lady in his life, but for you, I'll make an exception. Are you really? Am I really what? Sam Longwood. I am? I mean, I mean the real, the real Sam Longwood. Well, as best I can recollect, that was my father's name, too. I knew it. I knew it. You fought Howling Coyote at the Battle of Chickasaw Wells, didn't you? Why, that's so. I've heard about you. You have? Where? And books and, and newspapers and things. Well, you got reading? I do. I do, and I've read all about you in school. You're a you're a hero of our country. Uh, I guess that's been said a time or two. You. You captured Geronimo. You captured Geronimo practically single handedly. <sighs> Who'd ever dream I'd meet the real Sam Longwood? You're much younger than I would have guessed. I mean, you're not all that old for a hero of our country. All right. It's 
dumb and I know it, but I'm going to give you a break, so why don't you just run along? Run along where? I don't know. Get a job someplace, washing dishes or something. I can't do that. Why not? Because Mike would find me. You know, Doctor, it is truly amazing the steps modern medical science has made over the last few years. Truly amazing. Just drop your trousers, please, Mr. Knox. What for? I mean, this is not the Dark Ages, is it? I thought you were going to give me a, a give me a pill or something. You got it the same old way. We cure it the same old way. child back to a life of shame and degradation. You horny hypocrite, you whistling Billy. Yeah, you wouldn't know Christian charity if it jumped up and bit you in the ass. You know what I sure as hell recognize a Colt 45. That's what we come to this town for, isn't it? We'll make do.
Becky? Girls. Uh-huh. Uh, now, now, girls, I'd be careful if I were you. Mr. Longwood ain't partial to no whores. What are you doing? Your tradition. Always take hostages. Oh! You two wait out here in the hall. Who oh, fired that ship? Well, if it isn't my little friend who was kidnapped. Or did she run away? Hey, Mike. I told you to wait out there in the hall. What's this? Mike! Molly, be quiet. Shut up! $50 so they could buy a couple of six shooters so we could get our money back from Jack Holby. <sighs> well, they come back. They ain't got the money. They still got the damn girl. Well, I'm telling you right here and now, she ain't cooking for me. Not after her previous line of employment. And another thing, what about my free visit to the cat house? What about that, huh? I never get to have no fun. Billy. Oh, Billy, Billy. What do you care about Billy now that you've got what you want? It's no way to talk to a hero of our country. Oh. So that's how she turned your comb red, Great Scout. With that old hero crap. Uh, uh, Sam. Why don't you and me uh, take us a walk down by the creek? It just so happens that this young lady has a sense of history. Uh-huh. And where do you think she got the sense of history from? Me. Me, that's who. She didn't know Sam Longwood from a hole in the ground until I gave her your scrapbook to read. Captain Longwood, you've been took. That will be Nancy Sue's train pulling into Serenity Junction. Sam, if we are going to do it, now is the time.
Easy, Stardust. Now get your clothes on. And you go tell Jack Colby that he ever wants to see his wife alive again, he better come up with that 60,000 he owes us. Now move. Before I blow your brains off. Massey Sue, it's me. Sam Longwood and Joe Knox. You dumb cock wallop and shit. Counters anyway. If you got scabs on your tongue, so I tell you, Sam Longwood, you better think of something to say because when Jack Colby hears about this, my God! You know, and I tell you, when I think that I almost got shit that tears it, I am not taking one more goddamn step. You can take your goddamn kidnapping and you can shut it up. Oh. What's come over you, Nancy Sue? We turn our backs for a few years, and here you are cussing like a mule skinner, cheating on your husband. You know, that ain't ladylike. I gotta tell you, Nancy Sue, I'm disappointed in you. If you think I did... One more filthy word out of that sewer pipe you call him out of. Just one. And Jack Colby's 60,000 won't buy him back nothing but your mortal remains. Now I've warned you. And that's the end of it. Now, when we get where we're going, I want you to act like a goddamn lady. <laughs> She's even prettier than her picture. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Billy. How have you been? Uh, fine, uh, miss. Uh, I mean, ma'am, I've been just fine. Sam, I made some dinner for you. Sam? Billy? Where'd Sam get the chippy? The chip? Uh, well, she ain't nobody's. Uh, she just sort of come along for the ride. <laughs> Sorry that I lied to you about knowing who you were and all. It don't matter. But it really was only half a lie. I, I did find out all about you from the scrapbook, but it was the most thrilling and patriotic thing I've ever read in my entire life. Why'd you burn it, Sam? Past is past. When we go into town, do you think... Who oh, says you're coming along? I can't be going around with no kid tagging after. Didn't think I was much of a kid last night. Well, it was cold last night. In the dark, you fell a lot older. I fell a lot younger. Then close your eyes. I've been with a lot of men, and I ain't denying that. It's just that last night, with you, was the first time. You 
don't suppose that, that could mean I, I love you or something. I'm sorry. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah, Sam! Going, Sam? I'm going into town to get my money from Jack Kobe, and then get shut of the bunch of you. I'm a shot five times, knife twice, bit in the ass by a pig, stomped on by a horse, and sat on by a mule. When once in the winter '81, a grizzly chewed my big toe off, and I survived two avalanches, three blizzards, five Indian uprisings, and seven presidential elections. But I ain't never been owned by no woman nor dog. And I come too far down the road to let it happen to me now. I've got my wife. Odd time. You can have her back for sixty thousand. Still sixty thousand. Still sixty thousand. I guess if I've had the woman for fifteen years. On the other hand, here you come along. I know you always wanted to make her happy. I couldn't even make her shut her mouth. One thing I'll guarantee you, Sam. She's honest to goodness, thoroughbred stock, blue blood, black tongue, pedigree, and all. So you hop to it. Sixty thousand is a little steep. I wouldn't give you 60 cents to get her back. You want her back with her throat cut? If you have to. I hope you do it quick and painless for old time's sake. No, I mean it. On the other hand, it might be a, an improvement. With her throat cut, she wouldn't be able to complain quite so loud. She had damn little to complain about, compadre. Furs and jewels from head to foot, not a bruise on her, not a mark. Still, that mouth kept working. Perhaps that's something you know a little about already. Huh, Sam? No. No, she's yours by rights now. I wouldn't interfere. Maybe you can do something with her. I sure couldn't. Adios, compadre. I got a fight to put on here. Give my best regards to Nancy Sue. You sure you can afford them? No need to be bitter. You get to save the girl. I get to save the money. So far. Looks like it worked out pretty good all around. Excuse me. Jack, I think you're spitting in the wind. Well, no more than you, compadre. Colby! Yeah, there was a time you could have done it, Sam, but no more. You're thinking about it, which means you're not going to do it, and if you tried, your demise wouldn't make the back page of the Police Gazette. It's too late, partner. You're too slow. So am I. You better move along before these boys turn you into dog meat. God damn, can you imagine that tight-fisted, chicken-hearted selling his own goddamn wife down the river for 60 goddamn Nancy, thousand? Nancy, I warned you. You warned me to keep my filthy mouth shut. Well, what are you going to do now, kill me? I'm not worth 10 goddamn cents to you, stomp, strangle, or rape. That's the angel of the Panamint Mountains. It 
used to be. Let her go, Sam. We just ride into town Saturday and take what is ours. Ride in on what? We steal the horses, Great Scout. Sam Longwood never stole anything in his entire life that didn't belong to him. Well, he had better start now. I know how we can get some horses. We? We. What do you mean, we? I mean we, us. I'm coming with you. Oh, no, you're not. You've got to let me come, Sam. I want to get square with Jack Kobe as bad as you do. Oh, Sam. I know I've been a big disappointment to you, but men are just too romantic. I'm not apologizing for my life. I enjoy it. I aim to go on enjoying it. To the hell with your ideals about young love. Now, you want to nail Jack Colby. I want to cut his balls off. Am I in? Well, what, what about the horses? Well, there is one among us here who is professionally trained to ride into town and raise the operating capital that we need. You mean you want me to go into town? All for the good of the group, dearie. The fight's not until Saturday. That gives us three working days. And nights. <clears throat> uh, here is a list of the things we will need if you decide to go. Of course, we will uh, cut you in on a percentage of everything we make, won't we, Sam? Do you want me to go, Sam? Thursday, uh, we know that you got your mind set on changing your ways, but surely it wouldn't hurt much if you'd put off being virtuous until after Saturday. Sam. Is something the matter, Sam? I mean, you're not in love with a little girl or anything like that, are you? Because if you are, we wouldn't dream of... I never said that, did I? Sam, one fast flop behind the bushes don't exactly you mean... You watch yet. that filthy mouth of yours, Nancy Sue. What if she should run into that Mike lady in town? You never thought of that, did you? Oh, I wouldn't worry none. Horse can be as clever as jaybirds when they want to be. <clears throat> Let her go, Sam. It's the only way. The only way we can get the $60,000, Sam. Hello there, who's that? Oh, sir, it's, it's only me. I'm lost. The little girls are not supposed to be wandering around the streets in the middle of the night. Didn't your daddy ever tell you that? I never had no daddy. That's well, a heartbreak, kid. See, I, I got lost. I got frightened, and, and I fell, and I hurt my ankle. Well, all little girls are supposed to have daddies to look after them. I know that. It's my ankle, sir. Yes, of course it is. You know, you're an awfully lucky girl to run across a grown man like myself at this hour instead of some of these hard cases we got around here. 
Matter of fact, I've got a bit of liniment up in my room. It's just above here. Fix this up no time at all. I couldn't do that, sir. What? I couldn't go to your room. I hardly know you. <laughs> oh, you're very sweet. But you're absolutely safe with me. What could possibly happen? Take my arm. Simply think of me as the daddy that uh, you've never known. And here's the key to my room. The liniment is on the dressing table. I'll be along shortly to help you with the medication. Well, you're, you're sure it's all right? I think it's going to be fine. Yes. I'm still curious, so uh, what in the world do you do for it? Oh, I'll do my best, Dad. Sir, it's me. I'm a Vishniak. Not now. Uh, it's the champion's manager, sir. He's in the bar claiming that you bet against me. It's not true, is it? No, of course not. It certainly is not true, no. Well, then you better come down to the bar right now, sir, because some of the fight patrons are getting a little steamed. Yeah. My dear, don't move a muscle now. Daddy will be right back. have been one hell of a night. Get everything, little one? Yep. 50 pounds of salt and a pound of sugar. What about the shotgun shells? Double O buck. Good girl. Mm -hmm. You must have had a go with a lot of men. No, just one. Cartridges for you. Would you fetch that box for me? The box. Uh, 
mean to tell me that one man give you all this? Um, not exactly. You might just say I sort of helped myself. What are the bees for? They ain't bees. They're wasps. I caught them myself. Yeah? Let me see. Well, what are they for? You are too inquisitive, little one. But soon you will be told. Oh, if one man give you all this, he must have had a name. Yes, uh, he did. A and he was a nice fellow, too. Nice fellow by the name of, uh, Colby. Jack Colby! You went with Jack. I didn't say that. Yes. Filthy old man. Now he's two times. Not with me. God, he's he didn't. Pay and that's the truth. Going. Well, why did he give you the money? He didn't. I borrowed it. What? Just bet you did. Oh, I wouldn't bet if I were you. Because you see, Miss Smartass, the IOU I left had your name on it. Thank you. 
Walk these horses. Till they get their wind back. But Jack's gonna be right after us. He's gonna come after that money, Sam. You don't know him. Oh, I guess I know him all right. <laughs> Ladies, get down and stay low. If he's going down there, you damn fool. 
These horses gotta be water. Sam, what did these people want from you anyway? Her. They want her. Well, for God's sakes, give her to them. He's right, Sam. Colby's coming for sure. We could be dead center of a crossfire if you don't. Sam, she might be worth the price of five horses, but she's not worth dying for. She's right, Mr. Colby. What kind of a dirty, low-down Indian trick is that? I guess that's just about what it is. Yeah, I should have known. I think you should thank me, Daddy. We can uh, dispense with the Daddy business. You see, by detaining you up there on that hill, likely I saved you from shooting your own wife. My wife helped those half-wits to rob me? I'm afraid so, Mr. Colby. Your wife has taken up with the Sam Longwood bunch. The Sam what? Gotta be better than $60,000 here. Hey, Sam. Sam, we're rich. Do, do not. <laughs> Stop. Rich, rich. Stop. Sam? Turn around. Here, turn around. Sam, where the hell do you think you're going? Back. To the girl. I thought you said she didn't mean that much to you. Sam, can't you leave it a couple of weeks? I mean, what's two weeks? Is that gonna make a difference? Sam, you could get dead walking back in there alone. I ain't asking nobody to go with me. Who the hell said we were going to? I mean, just because Billy and I spent some time on the trail with you doesn't mean to say that we're gonna stick our butts in the air for you, does it? Sam. Let him go. Hell! Let him down good, boys. Far and aft. We're gonna have to walk him back to town. Mr. Gobi! Over there! 
Boys, they're coming back. No, no, Mr. Colby, it's your wife. Your wife. Don't shoot anybody. Don't, don't shoot. Just, just hold your fire. Come back for me, Sam. Yeah, let's see how bad he wants you. Jack, I want the girl. I want my money. You owe us the money. Your wife for the girl. Now, that's fair. Fair is what I say is fair. Sam, we've been through all this before. Damn it. The answer's the same. I want my money. What are you going to do now, Sam? Maybe this ain't such a good idea. We gonna hide behind women, Jack? Doesn't bother me none. Not a bad place to be. Why don't we punch it out? Just you and me like the old days. Winner, take the pot. <laughs> Just you and me? <laughs> like the old days. <laughs> Sam, I'd love to. Uh, one condition, Jack. Yeah, what's that? The winner lose. You get your wife back and I get the girl. Otherwise, I don't get my money back. Right. You got a deal. Oh, no, you don't. She's my property. Uh, maybe we can do a little, uh, negotiating. Maybe we can. Sam, that's my money. Not yet, it isn't. Cost me more than this, just chasing after you. Damn it, that's enough. Not quite. Thanks for the ride, mister. My pleasure. If you ever decide to kidnap anybody else permanent, I'll bear it in mind. Once in your life, why didn't you do what Colby would do? You got the money, you have got the girl. I gave my word. Sam? I... I want you to hold these for me for good luck. Well, I suspect there's no harm in smoothing out the odds a bit. I don't know. That son of a gun looks to be in pretty good shape to me. I got every confidence in you, Mr. Colby. I expect there's no harm in smoothing out the odds a bit. Mr. Vishniak, I want this to be a fair fight. And I want you to referee it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, Mr. Colby. No, you don't. Something, Jack. Win or lose. Now I mean this. 
I ain't voting for William Howard Taft. Sam, we've had our little differences in the past, but you've always voted the straight Republican ticket. Yeah, well, I ain't voting for Taft. Sam, we're both Republicans. You're going to vote the way you always have, Sam. <laughs> which is Republican. <laughs> He didn't hurt you none, did he? Uh-uh. Oh, oh, hit him! Say I hit him! Hit him! Say I hit him! Hit him. Say I hit him! Hit him now! Hit him! Hit him! Say I hit him! Foot that he stomp on. You <laughs> and you! Yeah! 